So it turns out a lot of you had some thoughts about my last SteamOS 3 video, and honestly, it's really cool, for better or worse. As this person kindly put it, I'm not a Linux person. I have an immense amount of respect for Linux and everything it stands for, but it's not something I've truly taken the time to dive into properly. I did some quick searches to try and put a little meat on the bones of the last video, but that's how I ended up saying Arc Linux instead of Arch Linux, which, yikes. The main reason I'm so excited for the prospect of SteamOS is that it's simple. Like me. It's the simplicity that I think could make it a game changer. Something that won't kill Windows altogether, but at least put a big enough dent in it to make Microsoft wake up to some serious competition. Welcome to Zestia's Tech, by the way. This video is more for your ears than your eyes, so feel free to throw me into another tab right after you hit subscribe. Everything I'm going to talk about today is based off of your comments, so let's keep the conversation going. I've genuinely learned a lot from all of you. First off, let's talk about why SteamOS 3 works so well for someone like me. It's just so straightforward. You boot it up, log into Steam, and it just works. No command lines, no tweaking configurations. It's basically gaming first, Linux second, which for a lot of people, is all we really need. I do want to be really clear though, as many people have pointed out, Linux is not as inaccessible as it may seem. I don't want to make it sound like Linux is this impossibly complicated thing that SteamOS is here to fix. It's not broken. However, for an outsider, it still looks intimidating. Regrettably, you're talking to a macOS user. If it weren't for gaming, I would have already left Windows behind. I'm prepared to learn how to install a new operating system. I built my own gaming PC. I'm not completely illiterate, but God, I don't want to modify my OS. I'm about to jump into some territory that I'm not very familiar with, so please let me know if I get any of this wrong. But to my understanding, SteamOS 3 is an immutable operating system, which makes it more stable. Essentially, SteamOS has two installations at all times, one active, one inactive. When you update, it applies the update to the inactive side. If it works, great. If it doesn't, you're back to the last good version. No blue screens and no panicking. And in theory, this should be helpful across the board. Linux enthusiasts love the fact that its SteamOS is based on Arch Linux, which means it inherits all the flexibility of Arch, but applies it in a way that's consumer proof. It's not just a gaming platform, it's a gateway into the Linux ecosystem for people who have never touched it before. Some of those users might eventually move on to other Linux distros, but SteamOS is the perfect safe starting point. Speaking of starting point though, this whole thing was started based on Valve's powered by SteamOS branding. Steam machines are coming back, baby! There are a lot of reasons the original Steam machines failed, but I think they're set up much better for success this time, in no small part to Proton, but as long as they don't screw it up, I think we can see a whole new lineup of gaming PCs shipping with Linux. I'm willing to install a new OS on my own computer, but a lot of people aren't. A lot of people just want to plug and play. This isn't just about bringing Windows users over to Linux, it could bring console gamers to Linux. You want to talk about Mac OS or Windows users thinking Linux is scary? You get a console so you don't have to worry about any of that. And hey look, it's a console experience that can play most of the exclusives from Sony and Microsoft. By all accounts, a Steam machine should be the ultimate console. But there are some exceptions for both first and third parties. We gotta talk about DRM and anti-cheat. Many of you pointed out that anti-cheat systems relying on kernel level access are one of the biggest hurdles that SteamOS faces. And you're right. Rootkit level anti-cheat is invasive, raises security concerns, and it's not even that effective. There will always be people that find ways around it. The real issue is multiplayer developers not putting in the work to move critical systems server side where cheating can be controlled more effectively without needing kernel access. Until that changes, or until regulations force companies to adopt non-invasive methods, Linux gaming is going to face some challenges. But there is a bright side. As more players adopt SteamOS, they're going to put pressure on developers to make their games work across all platforms. It's all about building momentum. The Steam Deck has already proven that when there's demand, companies will adapt. But speaking of demand, let's talk about how easy it is to port games to Linux now. Unless you're working with a custom engine, porting is as simple as compiling the game on a Linux system or virtual machine. That's it. 
And with the popularity of the Steam Deck, more and more developers are realizing that Linux support is worth the extra minimal effort. Indie devs especially are leading the charge here, proving that Linux makes sense for both big and small developers. The other thing? SteamOS isn't that special. The success of Proton has made gaming on almost any Linux distro possible. Pop OS, Fedora, Ubuntu, you name it. Did I pronounce those right? I hope so. You don't need to be running SteamOS to enjoy Linux gaming. And that's a testament to how far things have come. SteamOS 3 does not fix Linux. It just makes it consumer proof. I also want to address the other major drawback to Steam machines, which are limitations outside of gaming. A Windows PC is a productivity machine that also happens to play games. From a value perspective, if you want to use tools like the Adobe Suite, Microsoft Office, all that stuff, generally makes more sense to get a PC so that you can have that productivity machine and play games. And there are exceptions, but productivity developers have not done a great job of supporting Linux overall. Thankfully, there are some workarounds. Running a virtual machine on Linux is one option. It's definitely not as straightforward as just using a Windows PC. Another option is dual booting, so you can pick an operating system for either business or pleasure. That one's a much better option for people who are looking to install SteamOS 3 on their existing gaming computers. You can keep Windows as an option if you ever need it, and you don't have to burn your hard drive or shred your license. Where this would be a much harder sell is with Steam Machines. A crazy concept, but I don't think people would be hyped to buy a separate Windows license to go along with their pre-built gaming PC. At the end of the day, SteamOS will be ideal for people that just want to play games. As an Apple sheep, gaming is the only reason I still own a Windows PC. And I won't be getting rid of it anytime soon, but I would sure love to leave the Windows part behind. And the industry is not going to change overnight. A comment I read pointed out that this has been a long journey for Linux. There's a joke that every year is the year of Linux. But I do think that with the support of a massive company like Valve, SteamOS is building a new foundation for competition in the OS space. And that competition is going to drive progress. Even if you don't hate Windows like I do, you've got to admit having a strong alternative is good for everyone. It pushes innovation, lowers system requirements, and makes PCs more affordable. Microsoft's over here playing Monopoly. SteamOS 3 represents more than a new way to game. It's a shift towards gamers and developers having more choice and a market that has more competition. Is it perfect? No. But with Valve support and the growing popularity of Linux gaming, it's clear that SteamOS is more than just another Linux distro. It makes Linux more accessible than ever before. Let me know what you think in the comments. Are we ready to ditch Windows or consoles for SteamOS? Or is there just too much holding it back? Either way, keep the comments coming. You've given me a ton to think about. I've learned a lot, and I can't wait to hear more.